uh, Mr. Scott Cipherlein, who I'm going to introduce you here officially in just a minute. Uh, but just a couple of reminders. Uh, number one, don't forget if you want to call into the program at any point through the live performance, which we're obviously live right now, uh, you can call uh, area code 646-716-4667. That number again is area code 646-716-4667. Or you can email me at uh, ted.golftalklive at gmail.com if you've got some questions or comments. Uh, throughout the program. I'll certainly try to, to read those out. Uh, also, if you're on Facebook, I would certainly appreciate it. Uh, visit us on facebook.com uh, slash golf talk live blog and throw a few likes or if you want to post a few comments on there about the programs, either past or current programs, uh, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, I've been racking up my Twitter uh, Twitter followers here in the last few weeks since I've been pushing it, so I'm going to push it again. Um, my Twitter handle is uh, Ted and Buck CEO. I'd love for you to connect with me on Twitter. Don't do a lot of tweets, but uh, certainly keep everybody posted on what's happening here on Golf Talk Live. So uh, we we'll certainly love uh, for you guys to follow me there. And lastly, uh, for those of you that uh, have been uh, checking out the website, uh, blog, it's uh, www.golftalkliveblog.com. Especially go there uh, this time of year as we, we get closer to Christmas. Everybody's looking for some great gifts to buy. Uh, some of the guests, the previous guests have had some books on there. Uh, I've very graciously have, have put the uh, the uh, jacket of the book and uh, a short uh, cap of what the book is about and obviously a direct link and where you can purchase it. So uh, for those of you who want to get a, a book for that golfer in your family, uh, you can do that at the golftalkliveblog.com website. Um, as I said, my, my, my guest this evening, I've really uh, had to kind of wait until the, the latter part of the season. He's just He's just so busy. Uh, to get him on the program, but I'm very, very excited. Uh, I've uh, been following him for quite some time now. Uh, I see him all the time on, on some of the media sites uh, like Facebook and so forth, always chiming in and, and giving some great uh, advice and thoughts, and, and I wanted to have him on here uh, this evening to, uh, to share with my listeners. Uh, as I said, uh, Scott Seiferlin is a PJ golf guru and uh, also the owner of GrandRapidsGolfLesson.com. Uh, he's a four-time author of business golf and golf instruction books, and here's a list of the books that he's uh, written so far. Uh, the Game of Golf and the Art of Business, 19 Holes of Business, Golf Conversation. This is my favorite, Stop Slicing in Five Swings and Stop Slicing in Five Swings for Left-Handed Golfers. Uh, the link to purchase the book, I'll give it to you now, but we'll also talk throughout the, uh, the program, and you can get that again. It's at www.grandrapidsgolflesson.com and just click on books, and you can get a, a copy uh, for yourself. Uh, he's also a noted golf instructor in the Donald, uh, Donald Trump's book, uh, Trump, the Best Golf Advice I Ever Received. So make sure that you have a pen and paper handy, and because uh, he'll be giving you some information that you won't want to miss. Uh, without any further hesitation, let me welcome my guest this evening, Mr. Scott Cipherline. Scott, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Ted. It's great to be here. I really enjoy doing calls like this, so thanks for having me on. Yeah, I, I, that was one of the things I wanted to move into next, um, talk about some of the advice for teacher professionals and, and coaches. You, you mentioned earlier on in the program you uh, talked about those that wanted to write their first book, um, but in addition to coaching golfers and, and speaking and writing books, you also uh, have consulted uh, many uh, golf instructors on how to market their business. What advice do you have for the golf instructor who's just starting out? To learn guerrilla marketing and direct response marketing. Uh, a lot of these guys think that if they get more knowledge or if they buy more technology, that that's the way they need to go. They need to become the best most knowledgeable instructor when in reality the attorney that is the most knowledgeable attorney he's dead in the water if he can't relate to his clients he's dead in right. the water if he can't market his business and the same thing with a doctor um, and the same thing with a golf instructor so you can be the, the smartest golf instructor have the most knowledge have the best technology but if you don't know how to market it that's just, you're going to have an empty driving range, and nobody's going to be filling your book. So marketing is uh, a big part of that to have that balance. Let, let's expand on that a little bit, and, and, and I'm curious to get your thoughts on this, and, and I, I think you'll understand what I'm talking about in a moment here. But um, I've noticed in a lot of the groups, uh, particularly on, on Facebook and that, um, quite often some of the questions that get posed in there is about technology. And certainly it's great to have... Uh, some of the technology that's out there, but one of the things that I see uh, quite often 
is, you know, the question is, well, I'm, I'm thinking about getting this and I'm thinking about upgrading to that. And it, it just seems to be more technology focused. And I wonder if sometimes these guys are getting in the trap um, with, with some of the students out there that are, are maybe more techie and that type of thing, and they love all that technology, but the vast majority of them couldn't care less. And I just wonder if some of the instructors, like you just pointed out, are focusing too much on that and, and trying to gain too much knowledge and not really understanding their students as well as they should. Oh, right. It's interesting. You never see a question of, uh, I wonder if I should invest $10,000 into personal development. Do on those sites. It's always, um, I wonder if I should invest $10,000 in TrackMan or, or yeah. some other type of technology. Uh, so at, at some point, there has to be uh, some, port, some sort of balance. I actually think it should be reversed. You can probably increase the odds that you'll be able to afford $10,000 to buy some technology if you've developed yourself personally first and uh, developed your marketing skills first. Yeah, and, and that's it all comes down to really being a good salesperson. Um, I mean, you can have all the skills that you want and, and so forth, but if you can't market yourself well uh, and, and get yourself out there uh, to, to attract people to your facility or, or to you in itself, um, all of that technology and all of that uh, skill level that you've acquired doesn't mount up to a hill of beans. And, right. you know, I mean, and, and the thing that always gets me uh, and this is something that I've learned not only in, in the golf end of things, but in, I've been in, involved in other businesses as well uh, prior, is, you know, you can have all of the titles that you want after your name and all of the insignia and, and so forth, but uh, again, uh, it, it doesn't mount up to anything if you're only getting one or two students a day or, or one a week or something like that. Um, people are not impressed by so much by your credentials as they are um, about what you can do for them. And, you know, credentials are nice to a point, um, but if you're spending all of your time out there getting the latest, uh, you know, uh, and that's not saying that you shouldn't keep yourself updated, but if you're spending all of your time, uh, you know, getting recertified for this and upgraded to that and so on and so forth, that you're not really focusing on the reason you're there to begin with, um, you know, come the end of the day, like yeah, you things, said, things, just get out of, things get out of balance yeah. and that's, that's the case. And, and um, I fell into that trap um, years ago, and I had one of those uh, websites that I called the uh, meisgreat.com website where it, it highlighted things that I had accomplished, but it didn't speak yep. to the golfer. And the golfer doesn't care what I've accomplished. You'd be surprised. I, yep. I have maybe – I actually had somebody ask me if I was a PGA member the other day, and it was, uh, it was a large company, uh, over 10,000 employees, and they were considering hiring me to, to speak. And uh, it was one of the first times I'd been asked in years if I was actually even a PGA member. Um, so it's, mm -hmm. and, and most of my clients don't ask me whether I'm a good player or not. A uh, few of them do. Right. But uh, for the most part, they're more interested in what, is, what can I do for them. So they're reading my messages, my marketing messages, my marketing videos as far as what's mm -hmm. in it for them. It's, it's really about them. It's not about me or what I've done. Exactly. And what about for the more advanced, successful golf instructor uh, who's got a, already got a good reputation but maybe looking to, to take his or her uh, income to the next level? They're, they're, they want to up their game, if you will, uh, in, in business. Uh, what advice would you have for them? Right, and I think that they, they want to get out there and, and set their ego aside. They've won awards and, and things like that, but again... It comes down to bringing the focus more on the actual uh, golfer. And, and um, one example, I use the I to you ratio. And how many I's are on your website versus you's? A lot of these websites and sales letters and marketing pieces and flyers and promotional materials that golf instructors are putting out, you can count the I's and very few U's. And there's usually more I's than U's. So I like to see... Yeah about a, a uh, only about 33% eyes and 67% uh, use so use uh, speak to the to the golfer versus I did this I did that and that's going to get them to the next level um, the the awards and certifications um, I, I mean, there's so many out there that are top instructors they've won their section teacher of the year 
and they've won yeah. other awards for teaching, but they're how how are they making fifty to seventy thousand dollars? How can they not be making uh, incomes more like uh, attorneys and, and doctors and dentists make? We are professionals. We should charge like professionals. We went to a lot of school, just like these other professions uh, did. So how is it that um, we have some of our top instructors in our country that are only pulling in fifty to seventy thousand? Well, and as you said earlier, I think a lot of it is, um, you know, in the marketing, really. Um, you know, to, to be, you know, if you look at most of the, even the top instructors, uh, they're certainly, um, you know, can, can play well, um, but they're not going to be in the top 10 money earners on the PGA Tour. Their, they're, um, you know, the, their game is, is as such, their skill set, if you will, is on the, the teaching or the coaching side, not necessarily the playing side. And, and people seem to not understand that. They, they figure that well, just because this person is, is ranked such and such, you know, I'll give you an example, David Ledbetter. I'm sure if David went on a tour, he would probably, you know, be maybe average on tour, but he's not going to be Tiger Woods or Phil Mickelson. These guys have a unique talent. Now, in reverse, if you were to take Phil or Tiger, they might be able to give some tips, but they may not be a great instructor. So everybody has gifts and talents. And, you know, this is where, uh, you know, an instructor needs to, to utilize the talents that they've been given and not worried about whether they're the best player out there. Um, some of their students may actually beat them if they were to play head-on-head. Right. Head. You know, so absolutely, don't be, absolutely. you know what I'm saying? Um, and, and, uh, let me ask you just a uh, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and another big thing is just time time management and having a realistic expectation of how much marketing is required to actually generate a client, how much investment, time, uh, proprietary knowledge, and marketing dollars from an advertising marketing perspective is actually required to acquire a new client and then, and then maintain that client for year after year after year. I talk to a lot of golf instructors and I ask them, well, how many hours a week are you dedicating to marketing? And most most answer one hour a week, yeah. And that's that's just laughable, and it's it's insane when you're running a business and you're dedicating one hour a week to growing and and maintaining that business. Uh, no wonder they're not achieving the revenues. So um, I put together for for some of my clients that uh, I'm working with on the consulting side to help them grow their business, I put together an accountability scorecard that gives them ideas on, okay, they should be sending out this many press releases, they should be spending this much time writing sales letters, they should be putting X amount of um, hours in per week dedicated to social media and developing copy and, and all those different skill sets that are required to generate a client. You know, what's interesting is I, I, I use this the show as an example um, obviously, you know, I, I teach in that as well, but um, even though this is, um, program only airs one, one uh, evening a week, there's a lot of preparation that goes into it, um, you know, not just corresponding with, with uh, you know, potential guests and things like that, but just thinking several months ahead, what, you know, what's the direction I want to take the show, uh, you know, next year, you know, I'm going to be um, adding a, a segment uh, which you may or may not have heard uh, me talk about in the program before, but called Coach's Corner, where we'll get some of the instructors back on here, some of the ones that we've had previously, and some new ones are going to be joining in the mix, uh, and giving an opportunity for uh, some of the listeners to call in and, and ask some questions and things like that. And people don't realize how much is involved in that, even though it's only you know a two-hour program and one day a week. Uh, there's a lot of prep and a lot of work that has to go in to prepare for that. Uh, you know, a lot of announcements. I mean, you've seen them several times. I'm sure you've read them. Uh, you know, I'm on Facebook and all the different groups, letting them know who the guests are going to be and, and, uh, and, you know, going on afterwards and, you know, thanking the guests for coming on and, and letting everybody know. So, you know, I'm always uh, in these different networks uh, promoting and, and, uh, and getting the word out there. And as a result, you know, it, I get people every week emailing me and calling me wanting to come on the program because they're hearing about it. Now, if I just sort of, you know, did the show and didn't say anything and didn't do anything, um, you know, it would fizzle up very quickly because nobody would know about it. And it's the same thing exactly. with the instructors. You know, if, if you're out there and you've got all these credentials and, you're, and you know, you, you've set up a, you know, a XYZ range down the street and you're opening up your doors, but you haven't done a lick of marketing or promoting the business, um, 
you know, you might get a few passerbys that are driving down the highway and say, oh, look at that, I might check that out one day. But other than that, you're not going to get too many customers. Exactly, and um, congratulations on the coach's corner, too, by the way. That sounds exciting. Yeah, and, and Scott, I'm going to throw, throw that out there, uh, and uh, I hope that you will uh, take part in it. I know your schedule is tight, and we'll see if we can work you in there. But I think it's going to be fun, uh, and, and you know, not to, to – Get on my end of it here because I'm going to talk about it when I when I uh, when I let you go in a, in a bit. But um, uh, that's one segment that I'm working on for next year, and I've had some very good uh, reception on that. And I would like to invite you into the mix as well. I think you've got some great insight and, and some great tips for for the listeners. And I know that I've had a lot of feedback. Um, a lot of them are looking forward to having this uh, uh, in the new year. This year has been really uh, more about just sort of introducing my audience to. Uh, some of the great instructors uh, from all over the country and, and some around the world, uh, just sort of giving them a little tease, if you will, of some of the guys and, and gals that are going to be coming in the program, and also doing um, another segment, uh, actually another entire show uh, on the women of golf, which is going to be strictly geared for women only, not that men can't listen, but uh, uh, targeting that market as well. And um, uh, former LPGA player uh, Cindy Miller is going to be coming on and co-hosting with that uh, segment as well. So I'm really excited about that. But, you know, my, my point, Scott, is, is that there's a lot of prep work and things for me to do uh, and, and prepare for this show every week. And a lot of people probably don't realize that. And it's the same thing, as I said a moment ago, uh, in, in the teaching end of it as well. You have to be out there and you have to be uh, doing the sales letters and, and marketing and promoting and things like that. It's not just about giving the lesson on the, on the range or on the course. It's about getting your, your, uh, your ideas and things out there so that people are going to be drawn to your business. Very much so, and that uh, that multiplies, uh, especially for the person who's an independent contractor and has to develop all their own business versus somebody that's at a facility that provides them all their business. So you really have to understand where your business is coming from, where you want it to come from, and then you can, and when you understand those things, you can design the type of life that you want to live and uh, create the income and the, the schedule that you want to live. Exactly. And, and you know, it, it's just something, and again, I can't emphasize enough, this was one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the program tonight, is I think that a lot of, uh, as you say, a lot of people are out there, especially in, in, in our profession, uh, but really any business, uh, tend to flounder, uh, just unsure of what to do. And I think that somebody that's like yourself that's sort of gone through the licks, if you will, and, and kind of formulated a game plan for yourself. I mean, you, I'm sure you've had your, your down moments and things like that throughout your career, but you, you've managed to, to accumulate experience and, and understanding of what you need to do to, to make your uh, business successful. And as a result, you're reaping the benefits now. So it, 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 this is one of the reasons, you know, doing my type of show um, I want to bring to my listeners people such as yourself, professionals in, in the business, um, as opposed to me just talking about myself. I mean, I could do that very easily for two hours, you know, come on here and talk every week about myself. But I want to bring uh, professionals such as yourself in here to not only let the average golfer out there know what's going on, but also to let other teaching professionals know that um, by networking, communicating together, um, that we can share information and make everybody, um, just like as I said, playing golf earlier on, bring them up to that higher level. And the only way to do that is for us to talk amongst ourselves. Exactly, exactly, yes. And I'll leave just uh, one last thought for uh, your golf mm -hmm. instructor listeners on the uh, time blocking side and how valuable that was uh, for me is when I started to intentionally block time for marketing, I refused to take clients during that time, even if I could have. And uh, I would just it was hard mentally to do that in the beginning because I always thought that, well, I should just be an open book and I should just go out and teach whenever people want to do business because there's not that much business out there. But in reality, there's a lot of business out there, and you can design it the way you want. But when I first started doing this, uh, I remember early on I always dedicated Wednesday afternoons exclusively for marketing. And uh, I had somebody call me up, and they, they wanted to book a 2 o'clock time. And they called me up Wednesday morning and wanted to book a 2 o'clock time Wednesday afternoon, and uh, I told them that I was booked. Now, I didn't tell them what I was booked with, of course, uh, because that's not <laughs> any of their business, but um, right. I just told them that I was booked, and I said, uh, but I do have some time available on, on Thursday, and they said, well, I can't do it at that time on Thursday. I've got a dentist appointment, and uh, I 
said, well, you've got the weekend. He said, no, I'm playing in a club championship this weekend, and I really want to get this session in Wednesday. That's my only option. And uh, right. and and I said, well, I, I just can't do it. And so I thought I lost the business. He hung up, and wouldn't you know it, five minutes later I get a phone call. He says, I've rescheduled my crown with my dentist. <laughs> I'll see you Thursday. And that was so eye-opening. That was so eye-opening. It was like, wow, this really works. This is the way to do business. And uh, exactly. it's better ultimately for the client. They make it a priority. They get what they want out of um, my services. And then it's a better business model uh, for the golf instructor. It's a more profitable business model. Create exactly. more leverage. Uh, Scott, I know that we're we're limited for time here. I know I know uh, you've you've given me uh, a lot of time, and and I know that you haven't been uh, feeling too well today. So I appreciate that. But um, before we we give another plug for your books, and I just wanted to to ask you, um, you know, now that you're you're shifting into to winter mode, as it were, um, uh, can you just give us a, maybe a, a recap or a, a, an idea of what some of the activities you have planned for your golfers, and uh, and how is your business going to change through the winter months? Uh, yes, I. I work aggressively to encourage my golfers to understand that golf is a year-round process, even up here in the north. So we do offer indoor coaching in the winter, uh, January through March. I do take two months off, November and December, so I let my clients rest at that time, but then I encourage them to continue to, to practice and to take coaching from me uh, January through March indoors, and then, of course, outdoors April through October. So I use these two months, uh, November and December, to uh, catch up on marketing projects that I didn't get caught up on during the summer. Um, I use it. I'm also launching a uh, consulting program for other golf instructors through a website, usagolfmarketing.com, where I help them understand how important SEO, and uh, search en- which is search engine optimization, how important right. that is to generating new business uh, for their golf instruction business. And then I have some back-end coaching programs that teaches them about getting free publicity, writing sales letters, how to attend a networking event, how to make those profitable, and um, numerous other things that make their golf instruction business more profitable. And then in January, I go back into uh, the focus on the coaching side. Um, Are you going to be, um, I'm going to throw this out there since you mentioned January, are you going to be heading down to the PGA show this year at all? I don't have plans to do that right now. I I have a newborn at home. And uh, okay. <laughs> I plan, I have a six-year-old, a three-year-old, and a newborn at home, so I'll probably be uh, very limited with my travel in the next year or so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations on the newborn. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's always fun. That's that. Well, maybe maybe the year after you can you can uh, take them on the road, and it'll be a little bit easier on you. But uh, I'm going to try and make it down for, for a few days. I'm obviously not going to... Uh, I'm going to be an attendee, not an exhibitor, but uh, certainly going to connect with a few people that have invited me to come down and and make do it. But I, the reason I asked that is I thought if you were going to be down there, I would like to uh, to meet with you for a few minutes face to face, as opposed to uh, here on on Golf Talk Live. Um, but but Scott, let's just let uh, the listeners know here um, where they can get uh, your book, and we'll just go through the list of books again. Uh, again, my my guest this evening is is Scott Cipherline. Uh, PJ Golf Guru and uh, owner of GrandRapidsGolfLesson.com, and uh, here are four books that he's written that uh, I highly recommend that, that you get. And the uh, first one is obviously his flagship, uh, The Game of Golf and the Art of Business, which is is really a story um, that uh, that Scott has put together, and and I and uh, I think that you'll enjoy it. And I'm going to make sure I get a copy because I want to uh, want to read that as well. Uh, the other books, uh, 19 holes of Bu- uh, 19 holes of business golf conversation. And uh, the other two, Stop Slicing in Five Swings and Stop Slicing in Five Swings for Left-Handed Golfers. Uh, I know you can't give out any secrets, but uh, uh, i got to ask this um, just to play a little devil's advocate. Um, how did you come up with the title Stop Slicing in Five Swings? What, what motivated you to, to do that book? You're not going to believe this, but uh, I actually created a, um, that, that long before I created the book. And um, I was listening to an interview uh, about how to create a unique selling position, which is also known as a USP in the direct response world. And uh, it has to be short, uh, very benefit-driven, and uh, they use the example of corn's gone in five days guaranteed. So I swiped it. 
<laughs> I completely stole it from another industry. And um, I, love I related it. it to, I thought about, okay, if I'm working with somebody who slices the ball, how many, how many balls does it take before I can get them to hit their first draw? And I did some experiment uh, with some of my clients as far as how many sh uh, swings it would take before I could teach them how to hit their first draw. And I determined that five was a pretty good number. Most of them could do it in less, some a few more, but most everybody got it within five swings. So I felt very strong that I could guarantee that. And um, so then that became a, a unique selling position for me. And then I wrote a report on it and then turned it into a book eventually down the road. Uh, the left-handed version and uh, is uh, back in the 80s, Burger King came out on Pro Fool's Day with the left-handed Whopper. So I was inspired to come out with a uh, left-handed version of my book. And uh, I flipped the pictures around and flipped the language around and there you have it, an easy way to publish two books out of one. Fantastic. And, uh, in fact, I think I remember that when they came up with that back in the 80s. Now, that, that's brilliant. And, see, that just goes to show uh, for the listeners here, um, you know, if you're a little bit creative, you can come up with some great, uh, uh, you know, maybe great product or, in this case, some great books and, and be able to utilize it um, in, in your business. And, and Scott, uh, you certainly have done a fantastic job. Uh, let, let's let the folks, uh, again, know where they can get your books. Sure, and um, even if they're not creative, Ted, I just I want them to feel like they can still do this. And they can, I remember going to an event where Gene Simmons, uh, the uh, lead singer from KISS, was a keynote yep. presenter. And he stood in front of a thousand people and said, I don't have a creative bone in my body. Now think about that for a second. Yeah. The lead singer of KISS, one of the most yep. creative marketing bands in, in history, mm -hmm. he says he doesn't have a creative bone in his body. But he gets his ideas from other industries, and, and you can always use what I call swipe and deploy and take a, a good idea from that somebody else has already been creative about and think, okay, how can I apply that to my business? It's a really good way for somebody who's not necessarily that creative. You don't always have to work off of a blank slate. Um, but thanks for asking, having me on and asking where they can get the, the books. They can get at grandrapidsgolflesson.com forward slash books. Or if they just go to grandrapidsgolflesson.com, they can uh, easily find the books on that site. Perfect. And uh, if they want to get in touch with you, how can they do that? Yes. Um, golfers can get in touch with me directly through grandrapidsgolflesson.com. And then golf instructors can reach me through usagolfmarketing.com. Perfect. Scott, I want to thank you for coming on Golf Talk Live. And, and again, I, I know that uh, you've been a little under the weather uh, today, so I appreciate you uh, spending a little extra time with me. So I hope that you'll go and, uh, and, and get better and, and uh, enjoy the weekend with your family and that. Um, uh, Scott, I really appreciate, uh, again, you doing this. Uh, and just one last thing, uh, Scott, if you wouldn't mind, I've, I've obviously got the link in that, um, but if you can send me, uh, when you're feeling a little bit better, maybe the next uh, week or so, uh, the jacket for your books. Uh, I'm going to, what I've done as a courtesy to all of my guests on here that, that have uh, books out there is I put them up with the links on my website um, just so that people that are sort of perusing through my site can uh, can take a look at your books and, and uh and then follow back to your, your links and, and purchase a copy if they so choose. So uh, I like to do that for all of my guests. So if you want to maybe send you a copy of the jacket, um, I can certainly have that put up on my site in the next few weeks. Oh, yeah. No, that's no problem. I'll send that out to you right away. I'm not on my deathbed or anything here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, but you got family. you got to spend some time with your family. And, uh, you know, I appreciate you taking time with uh, and sharing some, some very interesting uh, uh, stories and whatnot, and, and some very uh, sound business advice uh, for the professionals out there that are tuning in as well. So, Scott, I appreciate it. You have a great, uh, great evening and a great uh, weekend coming up, and much continued success. And I hope, uh, as I said, I'll send a little more invitation down the road as it gets closer. But I hope that you'll be able to participate uh, next year in our Coach's Corner segment. I think you have a lot of fun doing it. Perfect. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Ted. All right. Have a great night, Scott. You as well. Uh, but thanks for asking, having me on and asking where they can get the, the books. They can get at grandrapidsgolflesson.com forward slash books. Or if they just go to grandrapidsgolflesson.com, they can uh, easily find the books on that site. Perfect. And uh, if they want to get in touch with you, how can they do that? Yes. Uh, golfers can get in touch with me directly through grandrapidsgolflesson.com. 
And then golf instructors can reach me through usagolfmarketing.com. Perfect. Scott, I want to thank you for coming on Golf Talk Live. And, and again, I, I know that uh, you've been a little under the weather uh, today, so I appreciate you uh, spending a little extra time with me. So I hope that you'll go and, uh, and, and get better and, and uh, enjoy the weekend with your family and that. Um, uh, Scott, I really appreciate it. Uh, again, you doing this. Uh, and just one last thing, uh, Scott, if you wouldn't mind, I've, I've obviously got the link in that, um, but if you can send me, uh, when you're feeling a little bit better, maybe the next uh, week or so, uh, the jacket for your books. Uh, I'm going to, what I've done as a courtesy to all of my guests on here that, that have uh, books out there is I put them up with the links on my website um, just so that people that are sort of perusing through my site can uh, can take a look at your books and, and uh and then follow back to your, your links and, and purchase a copy if they so choose. So uh, I like to do that for all of my guests. So if you want to maybe send you a copy of the jacket, um, I can certainly have that put up on my site in the next few weeks. Oh, yeah. No, that's no problem. I'll send that out to you right away. I'm not on my deathbed or anything here. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, but you got family. you got to spend some time with your family. And, uh, you know, I appreciate you taking time with uh, and sharing some, some very interesting uh, uh, stories and whatnot, and, and some very uh, sound business advice uh, for the professionals out there that are tuning in as well. So, Scott, I appreciate it. You have a great, uh, great evening and a great uh, weekend coming up, and much continued success. And I hope, uh, as I said, I'll send a little more invitation down the road as it gets closer. But I hope that you'll be able to participate uh, next year in our coaches' corner segment. I think you have a lot of fun doing it. Perfect. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Ted. All right. Have a great night, Scott. You as well. All right. Thank you. Okay, for those of you that uh, tuned in a little bit later, uh, my special guest this evening uh, was uh, PGA golf guru Scott Cipherline. Uh, Scott, as we were just talking about, is uh, the owner of GrandRapidsGolfLesson.com and has written uh, four business golf and golf instruction books um, that we were just talking about a few minutes ago and also... Uh, also Noted golf instructor in Donald Trump's book, Trump, the best golf advice I ever received. And uh, so Scott's been sharing a little bit uh, with us tonight about the books and uh, some of the, the business um, applications that he's been using for him and suggests that uh, that we take a lead and, and uh, use that in our business as well. And uh, as I said in the beginning of the program, I've, I've been watching and monitoring Scott uh, a little bit uh, for quite some time now. Uh, on the different uh, social media sites and, and always uh, enjoy reading his inputs and, and uh, every once in a while I'll, I'll jump in there as well. But I, I just enjoy uh, some of the comments and some of the posts that Scott puts up on Facebook, particularly uh, in the various golf groups. And I know that he's very well respected among his peers and uh, certainly respected uh, by this host. And, and I was glad to have him on. And, and uh, he has a, a very busy schedule and uh, it, it took me a while to, to be able to, to get him to wind down enough that he'd come on and share some of, some of the uh, conversation tonight. So, uh, again, uh, Scott Cipherline, I appreciate you, you coming on the program. And uh, when I get the information from you, I will uh, get that up on my website as well. Uh, I have another gentleman that's going to be joining us uh, here in a little bit. Um, but I just wanted to remind uh, the listeners here um, a couple of things. Uh, obviously, we're coming in. It's, it's hard to believe that we're coming into the end of another month here uh, on, uh, on Golf Talk Live. We're in the end of, the end of November uh, in another couple of weeks. Um, November 21st, which will be next Thursday here on Golf Talk Live, I want you to tune in for my uh, very special guest, very interesting guest, actually. I wanted to have something a little bit different on here. His name is um, Jim Verness, and he is the, uh, the owner of RV Golf Club. And it kind of intrigued me. Uh, Jim contacted me through, uh, again, one of the social media sites. And, and uh, really, uh, I'll let Jim do more talking next week when he comes on. But basically, the gist of his business is, uh, in addition to being a, a golfer, uh, Jim obviously enjoys uh, RVing across, uh, across country and whatnot and has put together a, a golf club uh, for those that, that uh, also enjoy uh, RVing. And it's very, very interesting. I think you'll find it quite intriguing. So I've invited him to come on next uh, Thursday here on Golf Talk Live at 6 p.m. Central uh, to, to join me here and talk a little bit about that. And uh, also, for those of you that uh, didn't uh, get a chance to tune in live last week uh, when I had uh, legendary Billy Casper on the program, 
uh, you really need to tune into that. You can visit uh, the Golf Talk Live uh, link, which is at uh, www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash Golf Talk Live. And if you just scroll down, uh, I think the very first one down that you'll see it is uh, the um, episode with last week with Billy Casper and, uh, of course, Kent Nobis from Nine Iron uh, Sports Drink. Uh, it was a great, great interview. Um, Billy gave me really the whole uh, gamut of the program and that's something I didn't get a chance, and hopefully if Scott's still tuning in. Uh, but uh, Billy is probably one of the most humble people uh, I've, I've ever had the pleasure of, of, uh, of interviewing. And uh, he, he just a, a really a very, very nice man uh, who, who really gives of himself. And um, we're going to have him on in the new year, uh, hopefully right after the holidays, uh, for, for a special event. But also, uh, I think I'm going to have him back on here in May, as you may recall. For those of you that did tune in last week, um, Billy uh, hosts hosts his uh, annual golf tournament, uh, charity tournament, in, uh, I believe he said it was May, at the San Diego Diego Golf and Country Club, uh, which uh, goes to help support uh, Billy's kids, which is is his foundation, which is uh, near and dearer to his heart. So I want to have him on uh, in May to uh, to. Uh, talk about the tournament in a little more depth and a little bit more in in uh, the foundation. Maybe he'll share a few few more stories. And don't forget, uh, for those of you, I'm going to have uh, Billy's book uh, link in that up on the uh, Golf Talk Live blog website um, probably this weekend. Uh, the Big Three and Me, which is really an autobiography of Billy Casper's life, um, but just some great stories. He managed to share a few with him uh, last week. And uh, there, there's just so many in there we couldn't get it all in and, and I mean if, if uh, I joked last week on the program if you tuned in um, you know I wish I could stretch it out for seven hours uh, this program and uh, and let Billy just uh, just have at it because just just a, a world of, of knowledge in the game but just a, a lot of great great stories and a lot of wisdom and, and certainly was a very underrated in, in the media if you will uh, in, in golf for, for many many years won 51 tournaments uh, including three majors, two U.S. Opens, and a Masters tournament. And, of course, he won the uh, Canadian Open uh, back in, I believe it was, 67, uh, which was something that eluded uh, Mr. Nicholas uh, for his career, even though he was uh, instrumental in designing uh, one of the courses that the Canadian Open played at for many, many years, uh, Glen Abbey in, in Oakville, Ontario, which was right next to where I uh, am from in Burlington, uh, originally from in Burlington there. Um, uh, Jack never managed to uh, get a Canadian Open uh, under his belt, um, which uh, bothered him for, for quite some, some time. He really enjoyed playing up there and, and uh, put a lot of work. And, and uh, for those of you that have ever been up to the Canadian Open at, uh, when it was playing at Glen Abbey, uh, it still periodically, I believe, does go back there every once in a while, but uh, it's moving around more. But for many, many years, uh, particularly in my younger years, uh, that's where it was playing at, at uh, Glen Abbey in, in Oakville. And uh, I used to go there all the time, and it was a very, very well laid out course, and a lot of fun watching the different pros. and And I can remember some some very, very fond memories of, of uh, not only Jack Nicholas but Lee Trevino and and uh, Freddie Couples uh, playing there, and, and many of the other top uh, teach professionals, some of whom have moved on to the Champions Tour, of course, but um, in, in more recent years. But uh, just a, a great, great venue, and. Um, but uh, Billy won that, and as I say, I believe in 1967. So, for those of you, <laughs> excuse me, that didn't get a chance to uh, to tune in um, last week, uh, be sure that you visit the, the website and uh, or the uh, Golf Talk Live link at uh, BlogTalkRadio.com/slash/GolfTalkLive, and you can listen to that. And also go back uh, through the on-demand section. If there's other uh, instructors that uh, that maybe uh, you're interested in, you could certainly go back and listen to them. All of the programs, including tonight's program is auto-recorded and uh, certainly give you a chance to um, listen to some of the, the earlier broadcasts. And uh, you can also, when you visit the main page there, uh, there's a link up top. Uh, you can also uh, follow the program so you get notified in your email um, when the shows are, are coming up, a reminder um, a little bit before the show comes on, just in case you're forgetting. And there's also a link there. You can like us uh, right there on the show for Facebook. But also... Um, if you are somebody that has uh, an iTunes account, you can actually downco- uh, download excuse me, the podcast uh, right into iTunes and then upload it into your iPhone and whatnot. So if you're not able to, for whatever reason, scheduling conflicts, you can't listen to the live program here, uh, you can listen to the podcast uh, through iTunes. So uh, make sure you do that as well. 
And uh, as I was talking to Scott a little bit here, I'm just, uh, forgive me here, I'm just passing a little bit of time here while I wait for my, my next uh, guest. He's going to be calling in um, Mark uh, Nace uh, from the uh, Southeastern Collegiate Golf Tour. He's going to be coming on here in a few uh, moments uh, to talk about a uh, tournament that's uh, coming up in December that he wants to make you all aware of. Um, so we're going to talk about that for a few minutes. Uh, and then he's going to be coming back on December 5th, I believe, to talk a little bit about uh, more about the Southeastern Collegiate Golf Tour. Um, and uh, so we're just going to wait for him for a few minutes. But in the meantime, as I said to Scott, I don't have a problem in talking, so I'm going to kill a few minutes here. And t- I just uh, sort of recap some of the things that I talked about with, with Scott uh, that I'm planning on doing for next year. Uh, I'm going to be reaching out in the next uh, uh, week or so to many of the guests that have been on here, particularly the uh, golf instructors and some of the mental coaches and things like that that have been on Golf Talk Live and get them lined up for the schedule for next year uh, to come on, uh, many of whom, uh, in fact, most of them, if not all of them, uh, uh, indicated that they wanted to participate in the Coach's Corner segment, which is going to be a lot of fun. Um, Just to give you an idea of what it's going to be uh, to the listeners here, uh, what Coach's Corner, the concept is, is going to be a phone-in broadcast, uh, which will be an hour long, uh, it may go over depending on, on how uh, how well it does, but essentially what's going to happen is I'm going to have a couple of the coaches on here uh, each week for an hour and give you, the listeners, a chance to call into the program, uh, ask some questions. Uh, also, I'm going to have a, a separate email uh, account set up for questions at Golf Talk Live. Uh, I'll give that email out uh, in the weeks to come. Um, so if you're not able to call in, you can send in questions ahead of time. I'll be posting the schedule as far as who's going to be on and what weeks they're going to be on the program. Uh, so if you have a favorite coach that you're following, maybe you're a student of theirs and you want to uh, come on here and, and ask a question, or maybe you just want to email a question ahead of time uh, for when they do appear, I would certainly love to do that. And I'll give you that uh, email address, as I said, in the weeks to come. I'm just uh, in the process of finalizing a few things. Um, but, but generally the program, I'm going to, probably pick a different topic each week so that we're not getting too repetitive. So maybe one week we may talk on certain areas of the short game, maybe putting, and we'll get some, some experts on here uh, about the putting game and allow you uh, to ask some questions uh, about uh, putting and some of the techniques and some of the different styles and, and uh, just how to improve your game. And it's really, we want it to be a more interactive uh, program. Uh, we'll still be doing uh, some guest uh, interviews as well uh, along the way, but uh, I want to introduce that new segment. I think it'll be a lot of fun, and I think it'll give um, you, the listeners, as I said, a chance to interact with some of the teaching professionals uh, from all over the country, and we're going to rotate the schedule out so there'll be some new ones every week and uh, give a fresh perspective uh, to the game, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. And, and I hope uh, my guest tonight, uh, Scott uh, Cypherline, will uh, participate, as he indicated. Uh, I think he'd be a great one to have in, in the mix. And, and um, as I said, we'll probably just have maybe two or three at the most. We won't get too many because it'll get too, uh, too confusing, but uh, two or three of them will be on each, each uh, broadcast uh, for an hour, and we'll take some field some questions uh, both on the phone and also uh, um, maybe even some Twitter uh, uh, tweets and, and uh, some emails and so forth. And also I encourage you to go on to the um, Facebook page at um, – facebook.com slash golf talk live blog and throw a few likes and you can maybe post some questions up there as well and again my twitter handle is ted and buck ceo uh certainly love if you follow me on twitter and uh you can send some questions through twitter as well and i'll make sure that you uh <coughs> excuse me pardon me um that uh i read them on the program if you uh, if you send me a tweet or if you email me uh some questions um at a later point i'll certainly make sure they get read on the program uh also i would love it if you would uh, visit uh, the website at www.golftalkliveblog.com and uh, check out uh, some of the books that are on there there's a couple of products on there as well there's gonna be more added on uh, in the weeks to come uh, as I get the information in, uh, into uh, sent into me, but uh, right now we've got the uh, in your face view base, which you remember uh, Marion uh, Coda was on uh, a few months ago talking about that, and really it's a view base that you can clap on, uh, whether it be a desk uh, or, or um, on your golf cart or golf bag, and it will uh, hold your uh, iPhone or your smartphone. Uh, it can be used for a multitude of things. You're, as I said, when you're playing around, maybe you've got a GPS uh, unit uh, that you're using. Uh, on your smartphone, maybe you've got a program or an app that you're using and uh, you want to be able to secure your, your uh, iPhone or smartphone, uh, you can do that with the in-your-face view base. So make sure you check out that uh, on my website. 
uh, you, there's a direct link there that you can actually go right to their, their secured link and uh, secured site, excuse me, and uh, and purchase the uh, the view base as well as um, the uh, the view base for the tripod mount as well is also available through that link. Uh, for those of you that want to mount a, an iPhone onto your uh, tripod, maybe you're taking some some video. Uh, of your golf swing and things like that, uh, it's also available uh, through the website as well. You can click on that link on the uh, golftalkliveblog.com website. And uh, also on there, you remember uh, a few weeks back, I had Joe Watson, uh, who was from No Sweat uh, Golf, and that, that was uh, the lotion that we talked about, or the uh, spray, if you will, uh, which was fantastic, especially for down here in the south when you're dealing with uh, more humid climates. Um, that's one of the things that uh, has really, really helped me. Spray a little bit of that on, rub it, you know, literally around uh, all of your, your hands and your fingers, and uh, it really helps uh, prevent your hands from sweating. And you can actually uh, even do that before you put your glove on. That'll help inside your hand from sweating into your glove and, and making a real mess there. So uh, definitely want to check that out. It's available on the website as well. It'll take you, to again, to Joe's uh, uh, site there, and you can make a purchase right through the link off of my website. I'm um, going to be adding some other uh, products on there as well. The Star Putter Putting Tool uh, link is going to also be available on the website. You heard the uh, um, the short uh, uh, commercial earlier on uh, uh, during Scott's segment about the Star Putter Putting Tool. It's available at starputter.com, uh, but it will also be available through um, my website as well at golftalkliveblog.com. Uh, and uh, got a lot of great uh, guests going to be coming up in the new year. Um, one I'm really looking forward to. Um, it was actually in uh, Billy's book. There was a, uh, a short uh, paragraph in there about uh, the late Teddy Rhodes, who was an African American uh, golfer um, who went through a very early, early time in the PGA history. Um, he has a foundation that uh, is run by his daughter Peggy Rhodes. Uh, she's going to be coming on the show in February. In fact, I think we've just confirmed the date, February 20th. And she's going to be talking about uh, the Teddy Rhodes Foundation um, and talking a little bit about uh, some of the um, struggles that her, her father uh, faced earlier on on the PGA Tour, uh, trying to get out there and play, and, and just some of the things that uh, he had to overcome. Uh, and we'll also talk about some of the other African-American golfers who, uh, who struggled earlier on. Um, such as Lee Elder and uh, Charlie Sifford, of course. We'll talk a little bit about them. And also joining her on the 20th is going to be Pete McDaniels, who was the author of Uneven Lies, uh, which was, a, uh, again, a book that talked uh, that um, talked greatly about some of the struggles that, that many of the African-American players uh, had very early on. And uh, the reason why I wanted to do this story, I think it's a, a great story to be told. Uh, I know that I believe the Golf Channel did a few years ago, uh, did a little bit about it, but uh, I wanted to get uh, Peggy on the program, uh, particularly uh, to talk about that, about her father, and, and uh, uh, again, some of the things that he, he was faced with, um, but also to, to help her foundation, and, and uh, she has a tournament uh, that they do every year. I believe it's in Nashville, and I believe it's in the fall, in around September, but we'll, we'll get the dates and everything for you uh, uh, when she comes on here, get a little more clarity for it, but I really want to uh, bring that, because really... Um, you know, when we put things in perspective, uh, if it wasn't for some of the struggles that, that Teddy Rhodes and, and some of the others that uh, <clears throat> that I mentioned, excuse me, uh, players like Tiger Woods uh, might not be playing on the PGA Tour today. Uh, so there were a lot of crossroads that, that had to be made, and, and uh, I think it's a story that needs to be told, and I'm very honored that uh, Peggy and, uh, and Pete McDaniels is going to come on and talk about that and, and um, his book, Uneven Lies. Uh, that'll be on February 20th here on Golf Talk Live. Um, at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, just waiting a few more minutes here, if you could just bear with me. Um, my last uh, uh, guest will be on here just in, in a few more minutes, uh, Mark Nace of the uh, Southeastern uh, Collegiate um, Golf Tour. He's gonna be coming on talking about a, a tournament that's gonna be coming up in, uh, in uh, this uh, coming December. So we're gonna have to talk a little bit about that and, and uh, explain what's happening there and some of the good things that they're doing with, uh, with that tournament. Uh, and then, as I said, he's gonna be coming back here on uh, December 5th, I believe he's going to be coming back and talking a little bit more about the tour and, and some of the things that he's doing uh, for next year in, in 2014. Uh, I want to thank again, uh, while I've got a few moments here, uh, my very special guest this evening. I, I really appreciate uh, Cypherline uh, 
uh, for coming on here and uh, and just sharing some of his insight and some of his experiences here. I know, as I mentioned several times throughout the program, um, that uh, Scott was a little bit under the weather. Unfortunately, he's uh, up in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and they're experiencing a little colder weather than we are here down in Panama City Beach, Florida. And uh, uh, so I know that uh, even though I, I know he said they're joking at the end, he's not on his deathbed, but I know what it's like to, uh, being from Canada, I know what it's like to get uh, a cold uh, this time of the year. And, and uh, But uh, but anyways, uh, Scott, I want to thank you for coming on the program, and I appreciate it. And for those of you uh, that weren't able to tune into the live broadcast, um, immediately following uh, the broadcast here tonight, uh, if you give it about maybe 15, 20 minutes, uh, the recorded version will load up on the uh, Golf Talk Live um, site and uh, you'll be able to listen to the broadcast tonight in its entirety and i really strongly suggest particularly uh, not just the the uh, average golfers out there that want to maybe pick up a tip or two um on how to uh you know get better prepared but uh, particularly for some of the golf instructors out there uh scott has a wealth of knowledge that he's accumulated over the years as he said and uh, he graciously came on and shared some of it. Of course, uh, I want you to uh, make sure that you visit his uh, website, uh, GrandRapidsGolfLesson.com, and uh, purchase a, a copy of, uh, of any of his books. He's got four books available, The Game of Golf and The Art of Business, uh, 19 Holes of Business Golf Conversation, and, of course, the two books, uh, Stop Slicing in Five Swings, and uh, stop slicing in five swings for left-handed golfers. So you can get uh, the link to purchase those is www.grandrapidsgolflesson.com forward slash books, and you can get uh, yourselves a copy there. And uh, again, you know, I, I thoroughly enjoy having a lot of the instructors that I have uh, on the program each week, and I also enjoy um, a lot of the, the other business types uh, in the golf industry that are coming on, and we're going to get into more of that uh, as well. Uh, one other thing I do want to mention, uh, now that I, I, I did briefly bring it in, and I haven't got all the details for this quite yet, uh, but another program, we're actually going to be putting it on an entirely different evening uh, for this program, but uh, something that is really near and dear to me, uh, and, and I guess I get this um, from my upbringing, I have uh, a great mother who has always been very supportive of me over the years, of course my father has as well, but uh, my mother particularly is always, as I'm sure many out there can, can say, uh, uh, test to. Um, but, uh, you know, she always uh, taught me that, um, you know, how important uh, the role in, in life that women play, and, and I think it's very underrated and has been uh, for many, many years in all aspects, and particularly in the golf industry. Um, you know, a lot of people might argue and say, well, you know, they've got the LPGA Tour, and, and I don't understand what you're talking about, but when you talk to a lot of the women out there, they're still faced with many, many struggles in the golf business. And as a result of that, I've decided to, um, since this particular program has, has been so successful this year, um, I just feel that it's it prudent of me to, to expand it. And uh, I can't think of a better direction to go um, than to um, bring on a whole new segment, uh, or actually a whole new program called the Women of Golf. And as I mentioned to, to Scott, uh, Cindy Miller, LPGA uh, player L, uh, Cindy Miller is going to be joining me on that program, uh, doing some interviews and, and uh, joining in some of the conversation and interviewing uh, different, uh, not only players, uh, but also some, some great female golf coaches, uh, coaches excuse me, and, and teachers. Uh, I'm sure that we'll get uh, some great ones like Nicole Weller to come back on the program, and particularly on that segment, I'm sure she'll come back, and uh, some of the others that have been on the program uh, thus far on my regular uh, Golf Talk Live uh, program, uh, but this is going to be a special program that's going to be really geared to uh, to the women of golf, um, not just to the to the instructors as I said, but to the players, uh, but also to um, many of the golf professionals out there uh, in other areas of golf. Uh, for instance, some of the business uh, professionals that uh, run successful golf businesses, um, some of the women uh, in that area as well, um, from clothing lines to um, instructors uh, to various different products out there. We want to hear some of their success stories and, and some of the challenges that they're faced in. And we want to hear from you, some of the ladies out there, um, some of the things that you're, you're dealing with and you're struggling with, not just in your game. Uh, maybe you're having difficulty uh, getting on certain courses and things like that. And, 
and uh, we want to talk about that and um, in, in the women of golf. So uh, Cindy Miller, as I said, is going to be coming on that uh, with me and, and getting involved in, in uh, different areas. Uh, uh, I don't know whether or not we haven't uh, finalized everything, whether she'll be on every program or not, but she's certainly going to have some great input, and I'm looking forward to that. And she's going to be inviting some of her her great friends uh, off the LPGA Tour uh, as well, uh, both past and some present, uh, going to be coming in. So I'm really looking forward to working with Cindy Miller. She's a, a phenomenal, uh, has been a phenomenal player, but uh, equally phenomenal, a fantastic instructor. And uh, and I'm also going to have her as a, a guest on the program as well uh, here on Golf Talk Live uh, in uh, in the new year. So um, I want to definitely look forward to to doing that. And I believe that. My